Hi, I'm Creston, and in this video we're going to talk about log management with log rotate. So when you manage a server, you're going to have to deal with logs, logs, and more logs. So your operating system itself has logs. So if you look in Ubuntu, you typically see an auth log, a syslog, a kern log, etc., etc. Um, when you install services, you, those typically generate their own logs as well. So for example, if you install a web server such as Nginx, it's going to generate its own log files. And typically it generates an access log and an error log. So the access is what access is being logged to the web server and then the error log are, are what errors are occurring. If you're installing a database such as PostgreSQL, it's going to generate its own logs. Um, it typically generates one log file and it has a particular convention it uses. Um, based upon the database cluster on the server. Uh, so it calls them PostgreSQL hyphen uh, the version hyphen the actual name of the database cluster. So in this case, the default is, is main. And your own application, you're going to be generating logs from that. Um, for example, in a Ruby on Rails application, you typically, in your production environment, you typically have a log that gets created called production.log. Uh, and if you're using a, a Ruby application server like Unicorn, it's going to generate its own logs as well. So this is where log rotate comes in. It helps you manage um, this mass of logs. So what it does is it does rotation, or it rotates them. It creates new files and archives the old ones. Um, it allows you to compress those old ones and eventually remove them. So it helps you manage um, the log rotation process. Now it runs a daily job with cron. So it runs once a day and goes through all the different logs you have configured to rotate them. And you can use this to rotate your own application's logs. And we'll take a look at how to configure that. So I'm using Ubuntu. And I'm using uh, my desktop here. Um, I'm not using a server, but there's plenty of logs to be looked at with that. Um, if you just go to var log, that's where the majority of the logs are kept on a Ubuntu system. And I'm just going to do a list and you can see all these different logs that are generated. Uh, so there's the auth log, the syslog, and the kern log that we were talking about, the OS generates, as well as when you're installing packages, you know, aptitude has uh, its logging, dpkg has uh, is another log file related to that. So what you'll notice is that there are different versions of the log files. Um, the oldest has the highest number, so this is the oldest log file, and the most recent one uh, looks like this. So let's let's look at this in more detail. So this is the current log, uh, so there's no number appended, it's just the auth.log. When rotation happens, it then takes what this current log, in, log is, as it moves it and names it uh, dot one. So this is the most recently uh, archived, if you will, log. Now you notice that these have been uh, gzipped. So this, these are compressed. Uh, that's an option you can say when you want the particular log files to be uh, compressed. Uh, so in the case here, it's compressed immediately. You'll see there's aptitude and then the .1.gz is compressed immediately, but there's a delay in the compression with this one. Uh, so your oldest log would be the, the highest number one. Now there's also directories in here, and typically servers, uh, services, sorry, will place their log files in here. So if you take a look, there's an nginx log uh, folder and then the PostgreSQL folder. So if we uh, take a look at listing out that folder, we can see, okay, here's the access log, here's the error log. So let's take a look at how this uh, rotation is managed. So I'm going to go to another folder here on my Ubuntu system. It's uh, etc slash log rotate dot D. So this is a folder containing configuration files for uh, rotating logs. So we can see Nginx has a configuration file in here. PostgreSQL has a configuration file. Uh, you'll see one for um, uncomplicated firewall, one for apt and aptitude. So let's take a look at an uh, Nginx configuration for log rotate. 
So uh, the first thing you'll see here is that it's uh, specifying the directory of where the log file is. So it was in var logs uh, slash nginx in every file with a dot log extension. This configuration will apply to. So for log files in this location, you're going to rotate them on a weekly basis and you can choose uh, daily. If any log files are missing, uh, don't worry about it. Uh, continue uh, doing the log rotation. Um, rotate 52, that means how many files you want to retain. So because you're rotating weekly, it's going to basically be keeping 52 weeks, a whole year of log files on the system. Uh, now you can choose to adjust this if you want to, but this is the from the default Nginx installation. Uh, this says you want them to be compressed as they're rotated. And the delay compress, that is what we saw previously where the first, um, or you can actually see it right here, the most recent archived log is not uh, gzipped, not compressed. That's what that means, delay the compression. Not if empty means uh, don't rotate it uh, if the log file is empty. Uh, you can specify to create the log files with a particular um, permission set or a mode um, with a particular user and as a particular group. Now these uh, next commands are related. So prior to rotation, you can run a command. And then after the rotation uh, of the files, you can run a command. Um, and shared scripts just basically means you don't have to run these um, pre and post uh, just this particular log rotation, but you can wait till the uh, the end of the process after all logs have been done. Okay, let's take a look at uh, Postgres's configuration. Uh, so this is um, uh, much shorter. Um, again, it's doing a weekly log rotation. It's only keeping 10 weeks. Um, it has this new um, parameter called a copy truncate. So if a partic particular service or application has difficulty switching to a new log file, uh, what the copy truncate does is it copies the existing log file and then it truncates uh, the current one. So rather than doing a, a move process to say, use this new log file, it always writes to the same, it allows the service or the application to always write to the same log file, um, but the rotation process does a copy and then a truncate. So that's what this does. Uh, again, it delays the compress, it does compress and it delays that compression. Uh, don't worry, or I should say, um, if it's empty, don't do the rotation. Uh, it's okay if a log file is missing, don't worry about it. And here it just happens to specify the group and the user to do the rotation as. Now, typically you're going to want to set up a log rotation configuration for your application logs. So I tend to use Ruby on Rails. So what I would do is um, create one, and I typically name them Rails underscore whatever my app name is. Um, so that just makes it very clear um, which log files these pertain to. So here's a particular configuration uh, I would use. So again, uh, like before, the first thing you want to specify is what is the set of files that need to be rotated. So I tend to put applications in OPT www. Um, this is the name of the application, this test app. Uh, and it stores the logs in a shared area because I tend to use Capistrano in the shared log area. And everything with a dot log uh, will be rotated. Now this includes the uh, Ruby on Rails applications log, like production.log, as well as uh, unicorn.log and any other log files uh, for services you're using with your application that you've chosen to place in the Rails application log area. So by default, I usually do a weekly rotation. Um, but you can short, shorten this to daily. Like I have an application that has a lot of traffic and I'm switching it to daily. Um, if it's missing, that's okay. Um, and I'm keeping uh, 52 weeks. Again, you can shorten this if 
uh, your application is generating a lot of logs and you want to uh, get them off the system somehow earlier. Uh, I'm usually enable compression and delay that compression if I need to look back at the most recently archived log. Um, don't worry about doing rotation if it's empty. Uh, and then I tend to use the copy truncate command uh, so that it does a copy and then truncates the log. So once this file is saved on the uh, daily running of the log rotate process, your logs will start being rotated. So to find out more about the configuration of uh, log rotate, the man pages of log rotate uh, are a great resource explaining all the different uh, parameters that or configuration settings you can use to configure your log rotation. Well, I hope you found this useful. If you want to learn more, please subscribe at rubytreesoftware.com newsletter. Thanks.